Hello, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Thursday live stream. And uh, this was just a little bit of a breaking news that uh, the U.S. government looks like they're going to sell a little bit of Bitcoin. Now, this is uh, $130 million worth, which is really a drop in the bucket. We've seen a lot of different uh, selling going on. But like I say, it's all cumulative. So before we jump into that, just want to remind everybody that we did a, it was a pretty good show today. It was uh, me, Ben, and Guy did an NFA live show over on Ben's channel in the Cryptoverse. A lot of good questions about uh, the macro, what's actually happening. And I think the, the first question was really good. What they talked about, is it going to be one chain to rule them all or can we see multiple? And uh, that, was a, that was a pretty good episode. I linked in the description so you can check that out. But let's just jump into it and talk about this, which I saw before we came in, which was the U.S. government is selling some Bitcoin. So, yes, $130 million, and uh, I was uh, checking out. When I read this, I'm like, you know what? It's not a big deal because $130 million, what is that? But remember, you know, it is a multiplier because it's a little bit different. It's not just like, you know, a billion dollars comes in and then we only go up by a market cap of a billion dollars. The multiplier, almost like a 10 to 13x because of the way in which Bitcoin is set up and structured. It's not like gold where you can just say, oh, well, there's, you know, there's an increased price in gold. We'll just go, we'll just go dig up some more gold. It doesn't work like that. There's a, it's not a scarce asset. It's a finite asset. So when we see some of this dumping, again, it's cumulative. This and grayscale and now Gox and then some other unknown black swan event that we don't know about. So uh, is this like the worst thing of all time? No, just something to be aware of was probably a little bit of price drop. So here's what we have. U.S. files notice to sell $130 million worth of Bitcoin seized from Silk Road. And this is not going to happen like today. As a matter of fact, it's actually going to take a little bit of time. The wheels of justice sure do move slow. So this is a notice on January 8th in the case of U.S. versus Joseph Farris, uh, U.S. District Court. This is Maryland order condemning and forfeiting the falling property of the United States of America. And it looks like this is Bitcoin approximately roughly 129 million worth plus 3 million uh, for this other piece in Arlington, Virginia. But this is where it's kind of goes a little Interesting. The United States hereby gives notice of its intent to dispose of the forfeited property in such manner as the United States Attorney General may direct any person other than the defendant in the case claiming interest in the forfeited property must file an ancillary petition within 60 days of the first date of publication, which was January 10th. And then they can voice their, their dismay against that and maybe turn it around. But uh, again, it looks like this is going to be sold on the open market. I know uh, uh, this is probably an opportunity for people to actually pick some up some some cheap Bitcoin, but as it gets dropped on the market, not a really big deal. However, remember this. So we've got this little bit of a sell pressure coming up, and who knows if that's going to be like exactly in 60 days. But remember that we've also got a nice little outflow from Grayscale. And uh, I'm going to steal stuff. Like I steal stuff from Ben. I'm going to steal stuff from uh, James of Invest Answers, who does fantastic work on X. You should really follow him. And uh, the money flow per fund after nine days. And it just, we can see here, James graphs it very well, that you've got over, you know, $4 billion. If it wasn't for Grayscale, you know how fat we'd be up right now? It'd be pretty darn great. But unfortunately, FTX has to drop off and because they have it, like I talked about in NFA today, it's kind of like a, it's like a cancerous selection that they have to dump and purge all of their Bitcoins so they can pay back their creditors, hopefully, and in some way, shape, or form. So this is on day nine, and they continue to dump. And here's actually where we're at. And this was, uh, let's see. And then, of course, the absorption. But again, we're still, I think James puts it in here somewhere where he says, the bad news is, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The bad news is BlackRock is slowing down a lot, which is great. Or IBIT, excuse me, slowing a lot, not so great. Grayscale Bitcoin outflows are still higher than net inflows to other funds. And remember, if it is true about the wash trading rule, then it's going to take them 30 days. Once they dump that traditional equity wise, because it's an ETF, they can't buy back in for 30 more days. So after 30 days, I think things are going to do pretty well. Then we're going to see a little bit of a dump here. And people are like, why is there a little bit of a fluctuation? And now you're going to know. And these are the things that happen. Good news, BlackRock has, geez, 45, almost 46,000 assets under management. And Fidelity has nearly the same. So those are pretty, those are Bitcoin that's pretty much locked up in there. So there's that outflow and the government. And then, of course, 
Mount Gox, which can never seem to go away. I always laugh at these articles because I've been in since 2017. I remember hearing this that it was gonna they're gonna dump on us any day now, and it never happens. But I just thought, ah, maybe this could happen in the background. So some customers claim that they received an email asking for confirmation of identity and account details of the Mount Gox insolvency case. So we'll see if they dump on us. But I got to tell you, if they know anything about Bitcoin, this would be the dumbest thing that they could possibly do. And why is that? Goldilocks. So we talked about this yesterday. So all this stuff that we said, you know, yeah, there's some maybe some dumping. Yeah, some dumping. Yeah, some dumping. But just remember, if anybody knows anything about Bitcoin, this is the time when me personally, I like to acquire a lot to accumulate. You don't have to. I'm not a financial advisor. You can do whatever you want to do. But this is what I do is I'm taking a look at this is the time before the halving when things really start to either they will flatten out or we'll have a little bit of a dip into it, which is great if you're a dollar cost averager. But also the projects that are being built and coming out and resurging, these are the times to take a look at those projects. And like we talked about, Matic. April 2019, Axie, April 2020, Solana, April 2020, AVAX 2020, Gala, August 2020, Shiba Inu, August 20. So like these are the times when things are really in the place of where you probably want to pick some things up because in the next 16, 18 months, it's going to be just fireworks. So there's that good part. And then also I just uh, took a peek here. Coindesk released that uh, Tesla's Bitcoin holdings remain unchanged. I thought they were selling. Uh, their Bitcoin holdings, but apparently, as far as the new filing, they haven't uh, dropped a penny. So they hold over 387 million worth of Bitcoin. That's good. Tesla holds almost 10,000 Bitcoin. It's the third large, and I didn't know this. They're the third largest public holder of the asset behind MicroStrategy and the mining company M Mara, which I actually hold stock in just a little bit. I was uh, kind of surprised that third largest public uh, company. Also, they did invest 1.5 billion in Bitcoin in February 2020, accumulating 43,000 Bitcoins. They they chopped off a good 33 33,000 plus as they sold off, but they still kept 9720 on the books. It's interesting. So, I like to see that, and that could uh, be price appreciation right there. Good for Tesla for not doing something crazy. And then as we were talking about the Goldilocks time frame, helium. Helium when it first came out, I didn't, I, I understood it was about telecommunications and being able to open up that sector. You could have a, a, um, a helium miner and you could essentially create a, a, a hub spot or a Wi-Fi spot uh, in a decentralized manner. I thought, oh, that's pretty cool, but uh, they just didn't seem to pick up steam until they moved over to Solana. Now they're in Sol on Solana, it seemed like things are really picking up. So. Telefonica partners with Helium to roll out mobile hotspots in Mexico. And if you're not aware, they actually signed a deal in Florida. I want to say it's the University of Florida or, or, or Florida State, where it's unlimited talk and text for 20 bucks a month. So that's a, a real D-pin, as they call it, a decentralized physical network uh, in action and actually working. So when people say, eh, crypto doesn't do anything, well, here's an example of where it actually is. So Helium's native token is up 5% over the past 24 hours. This was actually yesterday. I just didn't have time to talk about this. Here we go. So the telecom giant, this is Telefonica in Mexico, with more than 20 billion market cap, has 383 million customers, operates in Europe and Latin America. In 2021, I didn't know this either, Helium partnered with internet giant Dish as it built out its 5G network, which now has almost 1 million hotspots across 65,000 cities, 170 country. So they're really crushing it. And when I hear about these stories, I'm like, ah, this token must be like way out of my reach because, you know, I mean, it's actually doing something it actually has utility. So I took a look and uh, no, I mean, okay. If you want to look at like three months or something like that. Yeah. Okay. You got me on that one. I would take a look at a year. All right. All right, all right. But check a look at this. It used to be a buck 50. And now it's six, well, now it's, you know, all the way up to 870. But check this out. This is what got me kind of excited. First of all, total supply is only 223 million. Okay, that's pretty good. And that's, and it's already, well, the circulating supply is 143. So, okay, they, they probably have some unlocks at some point. Correct me in the comments section. But what I saw maybe interesting was this. The all-time high, it's 88% down from its all-time high when it didn't do squat. And now it actually does something, it has utility, and it's 88% down. Just between us, I bought some helium today because why not? Are you kidding me? 
anyhow, it could be awful, but I just look at that. I'm like, what the hell is going on? Anyhow, you mentioned think about that in the comment section. I think uh, that could be a decent play. Also, Magic Eden. This is a uh, Solana NFT uh, marketplace. Expands the rewards program, starting with Solana users. If you've ever used this in the past, looks like you could be eligible. Here's what's going on. NFT marketplace Magic Eden is building out a user rewards program. <clears throat> this platform said it would retroactively disperse diamonds to Solana OGs on February 2nd. Magic Eden de debuted uh, diamonds in March 2023, offering user rewards like lower fees, access to whitelist via the tokens. Magic Eden users can now earn diamonds by buying, selling, or making offers to an entire collection of NFTs. I don't know if other NFT marketplaces actually do this, but I thought it was a pretty cool idea. Like the more that you use, the more you get a discount and it kind of works out pretty well. And it says that this diamond drop is coming February 2nd. So I don't know if this is if you get in there and start to use it now, or if you be, be el eligible, but it says the reward goes back to, all the way to 2021. And if you've, uh, I'll, I link this in the description, it's just, it's just magiceden.io. And it's where you can purchase NFTs on the Solana network. And if you've never used a Solana network for like a DEX, and you've only used like an Ethereum based one like Uniswap, you're in for a treat as far as transaction costs, just saying. So you can check that out, links in the description. And that's, uh, that's it for today for the good and bad news. As far as like a PSA or public service announcement, just be aware that uh, Trezor had some type of, not a hack, but some type of like a leakage of information. So if you get something goofy like this in your email, dear customer, emails let you know your wallet assets are undergo undergoing an upgrade and effort to upgrade their infrastructure with temporarily dis disabling the following networks. We are requiring action from our users to re-enable the networks. So apparently you're telling me that a hacker who has all the time in the world to, to craft a decent email is telling you that you are going to re-enable the networks. Interesting. Failure to upgrade your networks could result to full funds loss. Again, I guess they think that you own all the networks. And then there's a stupid link to a website that'll scam you out of stuff. So just stay away from that and uh, that nonsense. And that's what's going on. Also, before we get into a little bit of the Q&A section, uh, what's coming up uh, tomorrow? If you're in the Puerto Rico Santorce area, I will be uh, buying beers for everybody who stops by over at San Juan Smokehouse from uh, five to eight. Not all your beers. I mean, I can't, I can't support all your addictions. I mean, I'll buy the first round, but you know what I mean. So uh, link in the description. Also, if you follow me on X, you can get the directions there. Five to eight. Always fun times. I like to. People ask me, what do we do there? I said, well, mostly it's me just listening to you tell me about your wins and losses and uh, the things that you do to actually make yourself self successful. I don't really share too much information, quite honestly. It's everybody just telling me what they're doing and it's quite fascinating and we swap stories, good times. Also, uh, tomorrow we'll probably do the new show which we'll be debuting on X only, where I asked everybody to show me their, their best memes and <laughs> it's a pretty good one. So we're gonna do a quick meme show. It will not be on YouTube uh, just because that's how we do things. And I'll do that uh, tomorrow and let everybody know. And then uh, also tomorrow, I'll be uh, pre recording a video with Coin Ledger. Now, there's a couple of questions about tax, tax services, and what that means for the Celsius and Voyager users. I did hear your questions and I will have those answered and get those out. As we have David Kemmer, who's the uh, co founder of Coin Ledger, on, and I'll, I'll get to the bottom of that. And then also, uh, hopefully by Saturday, I'll release the video that we shot with uh, me and uh, Ilya, founder of Near as we go over all the things that they're doing and just uh, how much they're growing. And I gotta tell you, Nier's a, gonna be a powerhouse, but that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive.